Hello and welcome. Um, here we have my completed sandwich style dry cell unit electrolyzer, whatever the hell you want to call it. This is it. Um, just finished putting it together late, late last night and I'm very happy with how it's looking. It's very pretty. Um, just before I go through the final stages of Hooking all this up, I thought I'd show you before I fill it up with water and try it for the first time. Some of the um, reasons why I've done certain things. Um, first of all, you'll notice that it's it's overly big. It's quite big and chunky. Um, I wasn't too fussed about that, mainly because if you've seen my truck, you'd realise that I don't have too much of a space problem that a lot of other people are, are worrying about. Uh, the other reason I've gone with bolts on the outside as opposed to going through the plates themselves is just the extra work involved in drilling all the holes through the plates and making sure they line up properly so doing this on the outside I've sort of avoided all of that um, I've used these nice chunky 20 mil panels on the outside for that same reason because the bolts are, are on the outside of the plates and not going through them it wants to be nice and chunky so that there's no warping in the plastic itself and I've got nice chunky bolts which are insulated with plastic tubing and both my connectors are on the same side here so that my tank can sit right on this side and both tubes can go straight into it a um, bit of a space saver there the bolts themselves I've got lock nuts on one side wing nuts on the other side the reason I've done that is so that I can feel my way around as I tighten this up um, I actually tighten up very similar to how you would in an automotive situation one and then the opposite and then an opposite and then an opposite went around maybe a, ten times and just kept cranking it down, cranking it down, cranking it down until I couldn't do it by hand anymore and then I just got the wrench on the other side and just gave it a few turns of each one <clears throat> and um, and that way I know my pressure is nice and consistent all the way around so yeah I'm gonna um, hose all this up and wire all this up now. I've made up a few wires. I'll have to make some more but for now this is enough. Uh, you'll see the method I've used for this. I'll show you on this plate here. It's, it's using these clip-on, push-on type connectors. Now they're not quite as good as bolting your cable onto your plates but they're a million times better than using these things and they do save a lot of space and I think as long as I keep my <clears throat> volts and amps down, I'm not going to have too much of a problem with that. But, you know, I'll see. Time will tell. I can always change it if I have to. Alrighty. This at the moment is set out um, with four neutral plates in mind. I can rewire it to however I want. The gaps at the moment in between each plate, I'm using three of this thinner 1. Point, uh, sorry, not 1.8, 0.8 millimeter thick um, rubber with my gaskets. Um, it's a lot cheaper than this 3 mil stuff if you are planning on using a 3 mil gap. This is quite expensive. Uh, all up in here there's probably about 30 bucks worth of rubber and gasket material. Um, and also with this stuff I can change the gap and I can have either one or two or three. So after this test I'll probably take out one and have just um, two between each plate and then I'll try one between each plate. I'm thinking probably around about two. I think one on their own is, is probably a bit too thin. I, I reckon it's gonna. I've seen. I've had gas. Uh, sorry, spaces this thin before, and and I have noticed problems with the bubbles getting caught. So, and I think three mil might be just a bit too big. But yeah, I'm gonna hook all that up now and try it and see how it goes. So I'll see you in a sec. Okay, we're all wired up, hosed up, and. Got some water in here. This is just tap water at the moment. Um, I've got about a teaspoon of uh, electrolyte in it. I'm just using tap water for now because I plan on pulling this apart several times and putting it back together again, so I'll have plenty of chances to keep it clean. Uh, I didn't tell you this before, but at the moment, these plates, you can see the holes up in the top left-hand corner there, so that plate's like that. At the moment, they're actually laid out one that way, then one that way, then one that way, then one that way. Um, it's just a configuration that I wanted to try out. As I said before, this design is pretty flexible, so um, that's how it is at the moment. Um, I've done the height of this bubbler so that the water level is just below those holes. 
And I guess there's nothing left to do but to turn it on and see what happens. Um, here we go. About 10 amps. We've got bubbles. Cool. It works. Looks like about the same amount of bubbles I was getting off my last cell. I'll have to do a bubble check to find out. It's interesting having these two clear perspex sides. You can see on this side where the water level is and where on the other side where the water level is. It's good being able to see that, I reckon. Gives you a good idea of where you need to position your um, water tank. I bet you if I pulled this out and lowered it, it would change the height of that. I'm not going to do it now because I'm holding the camera, but I will be doing all these kind of tests. Um, I'm going to do a bubble check now. Uh, I won't bother filming it because after that I'm going to add some more electrolyte and push it up a bit more. Um, check the temperature of these terminals. It's cool. Probably take a while to heat up, but as long as they're cool at the moment, that's the main thing. The water level is going up and down a little bit as it pumps gas through, but it's not significant. So yeah, alright, I'll try bubble tech. It has settled down to just a bee's dick off 10 amps. So I'll do that now and I'll let you know what I'm getting. Alright, I'm back after doing a bubble test and uh, attempting to bring the amps up on this thing. You'll notice a very lovely thing has happened. Look at the colour of the water. It's got all nice and it's like a pinky, purpley colour. I suspect that's because of the um, the gaskets. I didn't actually give them a, a, a clean. I figured this first run would sort of do that for me. And I knew I was going to take it apart again to do all that. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, bubble tests show that on 10 amps, it's now sitting on 11. On 10 amps it was putting out 550 mils. Which, funnily enough, is exactly what my um, stick electrolyzer was a stick electrolyzer over here was putting out. Um, the big difference is that um, I couldn't do any more to that to make it better. There's certain things I can do to this to improve on that. Um, same thing was happening though. I haven't been able to get the amps up above around about 11 amps. Um, even adding more electrolyte, quite a bit, in fact hasn't really helped that situation so I suspect possibly the plate gaps might be the biggest factor in that um, so I'm gonna pull this apart and and uh, make those gaps smaller and the other thing I might do while it's apart is look into ways of insulating around the holes show you this plate around the holes a bit better. Um, I'll talk about that more in the next video. There's some important things you need to know about that if you don't already know. And um, what else? Yeah, yeah. I'll probably rearrange the plates so that all the holes are in the same corner. Um, that way I'll be able to test out having it on its side as well. At the moment I can't put it on its side. So yeah, that's all the things I'm planning on doing. As I said, unlike this last cell, there's a lot of things I can do to this to improve on the performance. Right now on 11 amps, it's putting out about 585-590 milliliters a minute, which is respectable for a first run. I'm not too unhappy with that, but I know that it can do a lot better. So I'm going to keep working on it and uh, hope everyone's having some luck out there and uh, I'll see you all soon. Till then, see you later.